Dentistry. Smell Things Dentistry is a place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Let's talk about ultrasonics, whether you dry trough or you wet trough. If you have no idea what kind of what I'm talking about, wet dry, stick around. We're gonna go through the access real quick. And if you're new to dentistry, new to here, we're gonna you'll you see my style of doing these things. It's kind of just laid back. Let's talk about the important points that I think are really that I find are have served me well over the years. So we're gonna do some troughing between these two, the buccal canal, the buccal orifice, and the palatal orifice to get into, to access into the orifices. But first of all, we gotta get into the tooth. Now, what do we use? Well, this is a Maxry premolar, and I'm using a long shank, see the long shank? Long shank burr, we use it to keep the head of the handpiece out of the way so you can what you're see what you're doing. We're using a number two round burr. This is in a training bay, so it's an older burr. And one of the most important traits on this burr is from this tip to approximately here is six millimeters. Now, Deutsche Music Kent, several, many years ago, had measured that premolars from the cu the buckle tisp buckle cusped tip. Let's get it right, Ash. Buckle cusped tip to the height of the pulp chamber, roof of the pulp chamber is roughly seven millimeters. So that's a quantitative measurement that I can use, and you can see here. This is a premolar, two canals. And one of the things, I didn't take an x-ray of it, I apologize, but see this restoration here? That tells me it's an older patient, potentially, maybe some abfraction lesions, a tri you know, yeah, let's stick with abfraction. That pulp chamber is going to be reduced. So we're gonna use our ultrasonics to get into them. Normally, I would use a Munspur, I'll be honest. I find that having ultrasonics is kind of a pain in the neck. It's another box I have laying around, but it has saved me, and I do a lot of endo. It's pretty much all I do now. So I do have a unit sitting around. But let's get back to this access. So we're using a number two round burr. We're, we're extending along a path parallel between the buckle cusp tip and the pedal cusp tip. We start into the access just like this. So let me start here. So we start, we started, we get into our access. Sorry, I'm just yammering away, talking, and I forget to actually mention some important points. So we do this, we stop, we make sure we're on path, we're not going off angled. And then, you know, sometimes actually when I was really, sometimes if the case is this tooth is angled, what I will do is you can actually leave the rubber dam off for your access only, not for the whole procedure. If it's off angled, and I'll actually follow the the height of contour, not the height of contour, not that, the concave, kind of that, where the cusp tip, the concave part of the buckle, and even the pellet, I'll follow that and keep my burr, a lot, the long axis of the burr aligned with that. So I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully I did. Anyways, it's if you've got your accesses off. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue accessing into the tooth using that long shank burr. The beauty of the long shank burr, it keeps the head of the handpiece out of the way. I used to think, why would you use a long shank burr? It will drive you into the frication quicker. Arguably it will, but if you use it in a tr brushing manner, it allows you to keep the head of the handpiece out of the way so you can see what the heck you're doing. Thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. I really, I'm super grateful you're here. I just want to, it's a, I just want to talk about a course I created about a year ago. We've had several thousand students go through and we have a private Facebook group associated with it. But the beauty of this course and what I think about it is it brings students like yourselves together to ask questions and not be alone. You know, here's a core, this is a video we're just talking a molar. It's, and we did some troughing, we did a bunch of other stuff and we'll talk about those things because I know what it's like to be stuck in the middle of a root canal and not knowing what to do. And that is the, the idea of this course is an affordable place course where you can Go through the, the go for the videos, learn some basic techniques. It's not a lot of theory, it's really practical. And it tells it's gonna give you, it's gonna tell you the basics on how to get down a canal if you're blocked out ledge, all these things that I know you've experienced because I freaking experienced them myself. And I wanted to share this with others. So people and it, it's a it's all the it's literally all the stuff I have on YouTube put together in a modular structure to walk you through it. And probably the most fun of the whole thing for myself is our private Facebook group, which is a really safe place where we can all post our questions. These are just some cases that have been posted, but honestly, even this video alone was created, asked, there was a question asked by Alan, who's an awesome guy, and he talks about, his question was, do you do wet or dry troughing? I'm like, huh, you know what, that's a great, I'm gonna put a, post a video in here, but I'm also gonna take the opportunity to post that information 
for you. Anyways, check us out at allthingsendo.ca and I hope to see you there. So I'm watching from the side, you can't see it, but I'm actually watching where that lines up to the buckle cuss tip. Because once it's even, once it's even Steven with the buckle cuss tip, I'll stop, I'll take an explorer, and I'll try to poke to see if we, if I can perforate into the, the roof of the pulp chamber. Now, don't use this end, this is our training base, so this is the first thing I grabbed. This is the wrong explorer to be doing this. And the reason why is because it just flexes too much. I mean, it probably works, let's be honest. But on the proper one is a DG16, which has, you know, it's a straight, and then you can put, and it's sharp, this is dull, and you can put a significant amount of force into breaking into an orifice or through the pulp chamber. And trust me, it's a huge stress relief. It's kind of like an internal scream of joy when you pop in just like that. So there is into our pulp chamber. That's an internal like, yes! <clears throat> but if you did that, I mean, arguably, if you're sweating and you're really nervous and probably doing it out loud would probably be helpful, maybe a tension breaker. Uh, but breaking into that can be stressful sometimes. And this tooth I selected because it kind of looked like it was going to have more of a calcified pulp chamber. So this is a great example of, of finding an orifice. I, I made that one, but if you're looking for, say, MB2 and you see dust from a burr getting collected into that little orifice, that's a good indicator. It might might have an orifice potentially. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about wet or dry troughing. Now a friend, a colleague, one of our students, an amazing clinician asked this question, do you dry or do you wet trough? And I was thinking, man, I have never made a video about that. So let's do it. So before we get started with the dry troughing, the, one of the most important things you need to kind of think about is the tip, style the tip. The benefit of ultrasonics is that there's no head of the handpiece in the way, so you can get really conservative micro movements, uh, dentin removal, and you can see what the heck you're doing. The problem is, is it's very slow, creates a lot of heat. And if you have a rounded, so the beauty of what I use for troughing is a rounded tip. It can be this one, not normally. So I'm doing dry troughing, so I'm just doing br little brushing. Normally you'd have your dental assistant blowing air into the access to kind of cool the tooth a little bit. I don't think it does much, but it may cool a bit, but actually what it does is it blows all this dentin out of the way so you can see what the heck you're doing. There is another specific tip that you can add to your air water syringe that you can add then an acid etch. You can add a little acid etch tip to it. The name just escapes me right now what the name of that tip is. It's a couple hundred bucks, but if you're doing this a lot, you can add to your air water syringe and your dental assistant can blow air very really precisely into there. So there's our pulp chamber. The dry is pretty much what most people will use, dry troughing to look for orifices. They'll have their, like I said, their dental assistant blow air into the, across or into the access just to remove all the, that dent and debris and then you're good. So that's the typical thing. But maybe you're asking like, when would you use wet troughing? Well, quite frankly, I have no idea. But <laughs> I'll be honest. But I know that one of our YouTube superstars, Ali Nisei, uses his um, Brassler ultrasonic unit right after he drops into any type of tooth just to cleanse and get rid of pulp tissue and clean out the pulp, the pulp any, you know, clean up the pulp tissue, pulp horns, whatever, the pulp chamber, that's what I'm trying to say. I feel like I'm doing uh, Jeopardy here. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. So, you know, so you can use that to cleanse it out. Wet troughing is not that effective. As you can see, because there's water everywhere, it looks like a Niagara Falls, and you're, it's really hard to see stuff. Now, the benefit of this is that, depending on what you're doing, having water, so using water, so say for example, you're like, I'm gonna buy an ultrasonic unit, Ash, what should I buy? I'm gonna say, I don't know, but the things you need to look out for are the style of tip, and the next video we're gonna do is gonna talk about the threading of those tips, whether it's like a metric versus imperial, and if you can easily add it to water, because water, say for example, you're trying to remove a post, like a metal post, which I don't see many these days, but if you're trying to remove a metal post, you want ultrasonics, probably should be spraying water on it because it keeps it really cool. Now, do you have to? No. Um, but these things generate a lot of heat. These tips generate a lot of heat because they're cycling at 30, up to 30,000 cycles per minute. And the piezo, piezo, not the magnet restrictive like a cavitron. This is piezo. So totally different pattern. 
Um, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of that because I'm far from an expert on that. So what I'm going to do here, and honestly, I was talking with a colleague, so it was just kind of on, I was kind of on like autopilot. So what I'm doing here is I, I wanted to show you no water, water in the chamber, and what it kind of does. So it's kind of like a mix between the two. Now we're going up to six times or ten times. I think it's six times magnification. And that, see, this is the benefit of using ultrasonics. It's very conservative. It's great for very tiny micro movement movements. I've, I've used it in a number of cases. It saved me. Um, but you can see what the heck you're doing. There's no hand piece. Much more conservative. And what I'm doing here is I'm just removing, I'm using that to trough out the dentin overlying the palatal canal. Now the benefit of using a rounded tip, I can't stress that enough, when you're troughing is that it doesn't make scratch marks in, in literally troughs that tend to look like isthmus or something where another canal will be. So if you're troughing along dentin, like the apical portion of, your, of the tip, I highly recommend using a rounded, rounded tip. Now the things you need to think about when you're purchasing as well, not only is a water source, what type of threading is it, but also your ultrasonic tips. If you want to use water, trust me, I've done this. I bought the tips and they didn't have the water port. And I was like, oh, why is there not water coming through? Well, there's no port. It's not ported. There's no channel. <laughs> so we're going to go in the next video. I'm going to talk about all of these little details. I'm going to use the AT um, ultrasonic that they sent me a few years ago. I've used it frequently. I like it. Actually, I, I love it. Um, I, I owe them a, not a, so much a review, but I'm actually going to use it just to kind of show you what is what you got to look for in an ultrasonic unit. So anyways, this is pulp tissue. Pulp tissue there. This is the buccal, buccal canal. This is the palatal canal. I'm going to stop the, the treatment at this point. But, you know, put in the comments below if you, if, you know, if you really want to see finishing it, we can go through the whole stages of uh, shape, cleaning and shaping this tooth the way I do it and then using bioceramics. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I'm super grateful you've been here and check us out probably in the next few weeks. We're gonna, I'm gonna publish this next video talking about the different types of actual tips types. And you can see right here, this is, look at the thread difference. It's almost like metric versus imperial. And you know, this has really monkeyed me up. You'll see a mistake that I've made just based on these. And then we'll kind of go over uh, eight, the, the example that I have, which is AT system. They sent it to me, I checked it out. It's a great system, it's portable, um, but it's not so much a review, it's just kind of going over kind of the important things that you need to look out for when you're purchasing an ultrasonic unit. Anyways, until then, don't forget to like and subscribe, send it to your friends, I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon, cheers.